Mr. Bobrowski, good morning. Good morning again, Your Honor. Uh, Mark Bobrowski for the Board of Appeals of Groton and the Board of Selectmen of Groton as custodians of town property. Uh, this case, uh, the Groton case, turns on the question of whether or not the Housing Appeals Committee can order the town to grant an easement where otherwise a town meeting vote would be required pursuant to Chapter 40, Sections 3 and 15A. I mean, I've read those provisions. Are you certain of that? The Harris does, does a town meeting have to, by state law, should provide to anyone? Yes, Your Honor. The Harris versus Whalen case holds on point. Not to mention, Your Honor. It's not an easement. Uh, oh, wasn't it a sale? It was a sale, I believe. Yeah. But there are procurement issues here as well that are unaddressed by the Housing Appeals Committee. Under Chapter 30B, for example, a process of uh, disposition of land has to be undertaken. So it's our position that a but if town it's meeting. Sale, wh sorry. Why does that? Why is that so? Uh, an, an, an alienation of an easement interest is, for practical purposes, the same as alienation of the fee. What's the procurement? I, I don't understand. Uh, the, there, is, uh, there is an argument that we did not raise in the brief that the HAC also avoids the Procurement Act, Chapter 30B. In a disposition of land by a municipality, there's a complicated bidding process and notice process that has to be undertaken. To cut grass? This is not about cutting the grass. It's about granting an interest of the town, the property interest of the town. We concede that it is a small area of land that would be subject to this easement, but as I noted in my reply brief, a small area of land is still an easement. And the, the electric company could not have granted this easement to cut the trees. No. And I have to go to town meeting. Yes. And the, and the Housing Appeals Committee acknowledges that in its decision. It acknowledges that a, an easement otherwise would be required by the vote of town meeting. Um, if, the, if the Housing Appeals Committee uh, is correct, then the only way for the easement uh, formalities to be avoided would be to construe the town's grant of the easement as a requirement or regulation as defined in the statute. And the statute provides that the ZBA can waive local requirements and regulations where the imposition would render the project uneconomic. Is there anything in, and uh, this might be better addressed to the police, but is, is there anything in the statute or regulations that grant the uh, Housing Appeals Committee the authority to do this? Anything <coughs> explicit? No. They have the power to waive local requirements and regulations. And in my brief, I go through a very lengthy excerpt of Hanover, which talks about these requirements and regulations, all of them focused on zoning practices adopted by municipalities <coughs> to impede or block the construction of affordable housing. As a matter of just sort of background, if we agree with you and your brother that this, I assume this is what he's going to argue, that this can't be done, is this project finished? Yes. It is. Yes. The Housing Appeals Committee, after uh, receiving pre-filed testimony by experts for both the uh, developer and the board, ruled that the proposed driveway had inadequate sight distance. The inadequate sight distance was of the nature of 49 feet. Uh, this has to do with stopping sight distance for motor vehicles traveling on Lowell Road the, eastbound. The trees or whatever they are, and et cetera, all got to be cut down. Without the stuff. cutting of the trees on the property of the town of Groton, not in the right-of-way, on the town of Groton, there's only 300 feet of sight distance. We don't think that the jurisdiction of the Housing Appeal, uh, Appeals Committee extends that far, nor could they have ordered the town to allow the developer to come onto the town property to cut the trees, because in effect they would be, well, they, they would be in effect sanctioning trespass, and I don't think that trespass constitutes, the law of trespass is not a requirement or regulation imposed locally, it's a cardinal principle of property law. And I, I don't think that the, the housing gas and electric I takes takes the position they will not cut the trees. Uh, Groton Electric Light Department, represented by my brother, yeah. uh, they they are of as I'm sure my brother uh, Nicholas Scobo will explain to you, they will take the position that those trees provide a function. They provide screening uh, from uh, travelers on Route 40, which is a state highway, and serve other purposes that I'll leave to him. What um, and. I know you got this in your brief, but could you could you um, summarize the difference between this case and the Maynard case? And the Maynard case? 
Um, the Maynard case, uh, I acquired the brief for the Maynard case. In the Maynard case, the, the, uh, it's almost a throwaway paragraph by the court in that decision, and effectively what the court ruled is that it could dispense with the town meeting vote required by General Law Chapter 83, Sections 1, 3, 8, and 23. In those uh, statutes, uh, which have to do with extensions of sewer lines, there are various requirements of a municipality to uh, fund the municipal portion of it and uh, other issues of that nature. It was a, a very weak argument in the, in the brief of the municipality, uh, almost a, a, of a secondary, it certainly was of a secondary nature. And the court, uh, in a very quick handling of that, said that it could dispense with the town meeting vote. The town meeting vote that necessary under Chapter 83 and its assorted sections had nothing to do with the alienation of a municipal property interest. We think that the matter is better controlled by Chelmsford versus DiBiase, which this court decided. Uh, in the Chelmsford case, this the- This court decided Maynard as well. I, I understand, okay. but they decided the Chelmsford case at a later date than the Maynard case, if I'm correct. Um, in the uh, Chelmsford case, the municipality uh, took property which was proposed as the location for a Chapter 40B site. Unlike the Burlington case, in which the taking was not for a public purpose, in Chelmsford, they'd studied the property for a considerable period of time, and the court uh, found that it was a good faith effort at eminent domain. Uh, there was an effort to undo the vote of town meeting at the Housing Appeals Committee, and the court rejected that argument, as my brief indicates, because this was not a requirement or regulation. The town meeting vote to undo, uh, to take the property by eminent domain, could not be undone as a local requirement or regulation. It went. Yes. And that, that wasn't even an issue here. The Correct. I, th I think that's handled by the uh, holding by the court in the North Andover case in which it said that the legislation does not go that far. The Housing Appeals Committee may think that that's a useful authority to have. Undoubtedly it would be, but the legislature has not conferred that power, and if the legislature sees fit to change the statute, it has the power to do so. In Maynard, I think you just cited sections 1, 3, I forget, you, it was about five of them. Right? Yes, 1, 3, 8, and 23. And all of them are about funding? I, th I think some of them just have to do with municipal sewer, uh, general issues. I have the statutes. Uh, I mean, that's okay. But it but you, your point was that they didn't have to do with the, the alienation of land. No, they do not go to the alienation of municipal property, which okay. Chelmsford clearly calls out as a special case. When it goes to the ownership interest, changing the ownership interest of the property, undoing eminent domain or conducting eminent domain, we're in a different uh, ballpark than we would be under the Chapter 83 provisions, which have nothing to do with changing ownership of property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Poplowski. Mr. Scobo. Good morning. May it please the court. Nicholas Scobo on behalf of the Groton Electric Light Department. The Groton Electric Light Department is a department of the town. Uh, it has an independently elected board and supplies all of the electricity to the town of Groton. All of that electricity comes through an open air substation, which is adjacent to a right of way owned and operated by National Grid, which is a private utility that has nothing to do with the Groton Electric Light Department. An open-air substation, <clears throat> in this instance, is a step down uh, from 69,000 volts to 13,800 volts. It has a chain link fence, and it is set off of Lowell Road uh, by quite some distance. And there were, we own, no, the town owns the land, the department operates the substation on the land. What I said was the town has nothing to do with the transmission lines, which are but that property that's owned and operated by the national grid. <clears throat> uh, there, there is a, an open air substation. It was designed 25 years ago and it was set off from the uh, road and has a curved driveway. And, and there are two easements that are discussed here in this case, not just one. The first one is in the front with the trees and that's designed as screening so that people don't know that there is a substation there. And the second one 
is for access and egress as an emergency vehicles coming off of the right of way uh, owned and operated by uh, National Grid across the parking area for trucks and so on that the Groton Electric Light Department operates and then into the property of Washington Green. Those are the two easements at stake. No, it does not. It does not. There's a dirt road um, on the National Grid right of way. What the HAC said is that we can order, says the HAC, an easement from the National Grid property across the Groton Electric Light Department substation area uh, for access and egress of emergency vehicles uh, to the... When, when Mr. Barbowski said the project would be finished if this isn't a, upheld, this, this easement business, uh, the developer could go to the town, couldn't he, and ask the town meeting to grant him the easement? It could, if it, if it, so, cho if it so chose. And, and in that regard, I would refer you that I think the legislature takes that into account because of Chapter uh, 40, Section 15A, the second paragraph. It says when the town wishes to uh, alienate an, an, uh, a right in land for purposes of 40B, it does so with majority vote of town meeting, if not the, two If the town has accepted it, has Groton accepted that provision? I don't know provision? that. I don't know that. But my point is whether the town has or hasn't, well, the legislature had provided if, that Can you let mechanism. us know if Groton's accepted it? Well, no, you can write back to us. Sure. Yeah. I can do that. Uh, in addition, um, this open-air substation, as I indicated, uh, has a chain-link fence with some barbed wire on top, and it is, is separated. It has, as you might expect, um, two very large transformers, uh, which significant amount of electricity that gets stepped down in, that, in those transformers. Uh, the Groton Electric Light Department is not a local board defined by 40B. It has no authority to issue permits for Washington Green. It has no role in the process. It's merely in a butter here. And in that regard, I don't think the HAC, I don't think the law provides that the HAC can step into the shoes of the Groton Electric Light Department <clears throat> and permit in any way, shape, or form uh, the, uh, uh, the developer to use the property. If the HAC gets this power, it could be limitless. Well, yeah. I, I mean, the they could say to some private citizen, we need two acres of your land. I, I tend to agree. In fact, um, on appeal, the judge said, hey, it's only a small interest in land. I know. He called it de minimis. Yeah, well. Well, it is tiny. <laughs> but there, there's a difference between doing something that involves town property and a private property. I mean, if, if you treat it as local regulation. I mean, uh, I mean, in it, other words, I, don't, I, I think there's a big stretch between yeah, there is. this and saying, as I think uh, Justice Green was suggesting, you could take two acres from some private person's property. I, uh, well, yeah. perhaps that's what he was suggesting. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think he was sort of... Um, the, the land yes. is owned by the town, is it? It is owned by the town. And, so and it's unquestionably town land, whatever, uh, whatever your department's... Yeah. Right. You're, you're the operator of the... Uh, you're an agent. Transformers or whatever it is. As, as the uh, Chief Justice once said to me in an argument, the town is on one I hope hand. Not this chief justice. <laughs> this chief justice. <laughs> what did I say? It must have been the town great. is one hand, and the light department is another. But they're still connected. It really doesn't matter whether <laughs> these trees have a function or not. I know, I know you argue they have a function, you know, aesthetics and a, you know a few other things. Security, I see. security, and so forth. Um, the basic proposition is: can you do it or not? And if you can't do it, you can't do it. Whether the, you know, if the t if the town wants to be stubborn about it, you can't do it. That that is our view. Now, I, I would also like to turn the court's attention to the substantial argument, um, substantial evidence arguments we made, if I could. We need to get to those if we agree with you on this easement thing? I don't think so, no. Okay. No. Because you said we didn't. Nonetheless, assuming that you make a mistake. Oh, no, no, you I'm don't not do that. <laughs> I'm just uh, um, analytically trying to put this case together. Mm -hmm. uh, we agree the Groton Electric Light Department has the burden uh, of, by substantial evidence to prove that the dangers of the substation outweigh the need for affordable housing. We believe we've met that burden. There was only one uh, piece of evidence, one expert, who testified on the safety issues uh, in the case, the safety issues being the, the harm that could be caused, and that was our expert. There was no other evidence. In fact, the HAC found that it was undeniable, indisputable, that and indisputable that <clears throat> exposure to high voltage burns or kills instantly. There's a very high risk of catastrophic injury. The children, particularly at risk, 
and that it is impossible to guard unauthorized entry. But wasn't there evidence of a sound uh, of a wall? Or I, I'm not so sure I'd call it evidence. I think that there was a, a, a proposition put forth by the hearing officer, the AJC, what if a sound wall was put up? That only, that only covers part of the property. It doesn't cover, it doesn't cover th uh, two sides of the property. There's no one living in the land next door. Across the street, and, and there is one, one or two houses across the street. That is correct. So it seems to me if, if you have a problem, then you ought to address the safety problem. Well, I don't think that's, I don't think that's our burden. I think that's the. Of course it is, and, and for the si substation and the design, et cetera, it was cited by the Energy Facility Siting Board with those very points in mind, so including safety. Mind That's correct. If, if, if for example, if, 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 if for example, that the, how, the, the, um, the affordable housing was next door, they would, this substation would be enclosed. It wouldn't be an open-air substation. Absolutely. The fact is, it was cited there purposely. No, no, that's not right. It, it, it is designed for the space in which it is located. Whatever the standard was 25 years ago when this was built, the answer is yes, it was designed for safety in mind. The problem is when you put, a, when you put 44 units next to it, that safety goes away. And it's the burden under the law of the developer to provide some kind of uh, mitigation measures, not the Groton Electric Light Department to do so. If the Groton Electric Light Department had to do that, it would have to spend... Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely, and it is safe the way it. No, we can't dictate who's going to live on the street, but the zoning of uh, of the abutting land was for maybe one or two houses. That's it. The override was on the zoning. Potentially, that point you'd have to. We consider the um, we would whatever the we would have to are. clearly reconsider the design and so on. There's no doubt about it. But under the HAC set of circumstances, that's the developer's burden, not ours. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Scoble. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. Uh, good morning, Your Honors. May it please the Court, Assistant Attorney General Marianne Reynolds for the Housing Appeals Committee. Analytically, I would like to focus you on the fundamental issue in this case, which is reasonableness. Reasonableness is a statutory term. You'll find it in Section 23. The standard for the committee's review of this application was whether the board's denial was reasonable and consistent with local needs. I take it you're focusing us there because you have no direct authority that permits the HAC to grant an easement on somebody else's property. Correct. There's no, there's no Nothing explicit. Nothing in any statute says, well, in doing one of these things, you can grant easements, create rights of access, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No, the, there is no explicit language that either um, expressly provides for or, or conversely expressly prohibits what the uh, Could they committee. they pass a regulation uh, implementing their, quote, statutory authority to permit this sort of thing to be done? The well, the reg we would like you to consider this case as it was presented well, that's um, what on the record. Do, but I'm just wondering if, you know, down the road, they wanted to, you know, shore it up a little bit, maybe define a little more particularly what kind of interests, maybe limit them to interests on municipal land as opposed to private property. They, could they do that? Um, well, you're... Your Honor, I, I can't speak to how they would interpret um, their authority in an area where they haven't yet expressed that, um, where they haven't set it out for comment, a regulation would put out for comment and they would review those. But here in this case, there is statutory language 
and case law that supports what the committee has done. Is Again, the, the, and you're relying on Maynard? Uh, that's one of them, but that's not, that's not the only case that we would be relying on. The first. Right. The, you as a board has no power to do it. Right. What the committee did here was it ordered the grant of a permit, and it focused on what the problem is. And I would I'd strongly urge you to focus on the problem. I think this, by starting off just talking about an argument over an easement, we that's lose the. That's his problem. The power to do that. The, if I may, if I, but we only get there based on this particular record because the easement was introduced as a solution by the board no, I in understand. this proceeding. Ms. In, Ms. In Reynolds, do, you cons do, do you recognize, I don't know, maybe concede is the wrong word, that when it comes, for whatever reasons, good or bad, when it comes to real property, right, real property, I mean, in just about every area of law I can think of, we treat real property, which the granting of an easement is, concerns real property, somewhat differently than we do, for example, all kinds of other regulations, all kinds of other, I mean, what, what, yes. from the, from the so, so it's, it's, not, it's, it's not helpful for you, frankly, from my point of view, to say you have to understand how we got to the easement question. Well, but you, you well, just said the board proposed it? The board proposed it. The board's the ZBA. As, right, as the mitigating solution to the problem presented, which was the problem presented was that traffic motoring public along Lowell Road, when they got to the vicinity of where this proposed development's access road would be, if there was an obstacle in Lowell Road, then they would not have adequate sight distance to stop and react to that, that obstacle. But what authority does the board have to grant easements over town property? Board is the, the, the board the, is the town, right? Right. That's the board the board is operating as a town, and the board no, the committee. Oh no no it's right. The not even that the, it's a board. The board the the committee um, has the authority um, on to uh, act as the town in a number of ways as outlined in the statute. But what I'm what I really need you to do is to just first pull back and at least if you understand where the committee was coming from. Um, as a, as a threshold matter, um, we will make a lot of progress because the easement, again, is the committee's interest is not in first interest, is not in establishing the power to require an easement. The committee's first interest is in reviewing this application that was before it and determining whether the board's denial was reasonable and consistent with local needs. The only reason that the committee found why this project could be not go forward was because motoring public on Lowell Road were going to not have adequate stopping sight distance to react to an obstacle in Lowell Road. I would note that presumably that same problem exists today with or without the development. Okay, and all the, the only practical, no, there is a practical solution to making Lowell Road safe today and with the housing development for motoring public, and that was they just need to mow some grass. I really it's wanted this very slight regrading. regrading of tr any cutting no of trees. trees. I don't know where these trees come from. Oh. No trees. Um, the, um, there's vegetation. All that was talked about was maintaining a vegetation clearance. So this is like scrub bush. This is right up against the inside curve of Lowell Road. The trees are set further back. Those trees set further back uh, are what the Geld refers to as the screen. I'm talking much closer to the road in that there's a little bit of grading that needs to be done. Uh, no, that's in the, that, yeah, that's at a different location. That's in the back. And that, that's a so-called easement, yes. And there, the, the committee's decision doesn't say that an easement has to be granted. It says that an easement can be granted if the town will not voluntarily address the situation itself. The, the committee. 
the committee. He'll go back right. to hack. And, and what, what I'm saying is in distinguishing and getting back to the Chief Justice's question, yes, Maynard helps us because Maynard talks about the town meeting vote can be dispensed with as a local rule or, or requirement. But I'd also have you take a look at the... That it's frivolous. Agreed. It says what it says, and the, co and the committee read Maynard and, and accepted it uh, for what it says. But that is. That's a pretty broad meaning of Maynard. <coughs> Town meeting requirements of all sorts are somehow. That may, that may be a broad reading. Um, and the one, one statement at the end about the opinion. I'd also draw your attention, too, though, to other cases that I feel support our position. Those include Chelmsford, they include the North Andover case. And here's the reason why. In those cases where you pushed back the committee's authority, you said two things that don't operate here. One is you said, when we have to get involved with the balancing of public purposes, uh, we are not going to do that. So to the extent that there's competing public purposes established by the legislature, the housing committee uh, and uh, some other like a conservation uh, public policy, we are not going to decide that, that affordable housing outweighs conservation. You don't have that here. The only Balance, sort of competing public purpose you have is public safety along low road. There, there's a statute that very clearly says that a town has the duty to maintain roadways in a safe condition. So all that we're asking is that the committee um, be viewed as applying that reasonable language and saying here we have the town has an opportunity to keep low road safe, doesn't have to go onto anybody else's property, it controls the property at issue, it should keep that area. We, we will be happy to have a solution where it's other than an easement, the town should step up and do it itself. But what the town said in this case, it's in this record, it said, we're not gonna do it. We are gonna be stubborn, I think was the word, I would say suggest hostile. And given that the town was not gonna do it, that they made that extremely clear, the committee was forced to look at the easement option which they had presented, and the only obstacle- When did, they, when did the town present the easement option? It's their um, expert witness. Uh, I think it's on page 763 to 764 of the administrative record. And there the, uh, their witness said, you need to get an easement. And then what they, they came in and they quickly argued, but you can't. That's, the, that's the evidence that they put in, that that is the mitigating solution to the, that you need to get an easement. And yes, they came in quickly um, on a legal basis and said, but you can't get an easement because you need a town meeting vote. And the committee looked at Maynard and said, well, town meeting. No, because the town is in the reply brief makes clear. They could just do that themselves or they could give permission. We don't, the only reason that an easement is even suggested is because the town won't do it themselves or they won't give, voluntarily give permission. There's nothing in this record that suggests that in order for this to be accomplished, the only way is for, um, from a, is for an easement, the town could have done it themselves. And we would. Well, you would apply. You would look at the case developed and decide if that's reasonable. I would suggest that hypothetically speaking, that's a much different case and you might go other, the other way in that case and you might go here because he. But here there's no change. There's absolutely no change in what this land is being used for. All the, this land is just scrub, veget, scrub vegetation, inside curve. It's just, it's basically um, by keeping the vegetation low by mowing, mowing the grass. The emergency Does the access. record tell us why the town opposes uh, allowing the vegetation to be cut back? No, it, it doesn't It doesn't say that. It, it just basically is using this as a convenient way, what we call an effective veto, to kill this affordable housing project. It makes no rational sense that they wouldn't want it today maintain uh, that vegetation lower, uh, but I don't know if they, apparently they feel that it's the state um, clears the road, I'm, I'm not sure that. Low road is, is Route 40, so right. So, 
Uh, but the town, the town has a duty to maintain under the statute, and this is not that there's, um, the town has a duty, as Geld says in their reply brief, to agrees with our interpretation of, of uh, the statute, I think it's chapter 84. The practical matter, how would you formalize this easement? With the, if the gas and if the town refuses to to sign a formal legal document granting the easement, what do you record in the registry of deeds? Uh, the, the opinion of HAC. Um, presumably, the parties would work that out. The, the, um, as the board's expert said, that you'd get an easement, and they did. And the, um, what if the, they don't work it out? What do you do? I then? guess they would have to come back to the housing appeals committee and, and ask them to. For the look issue at the an order directing uh, the town board, officer, mayor, whatever it is, to sign the easement? Uh, that, I guess that would be a bridge that we would cross when we come to a well, Hopefully, it's actually, it's, hope Let me tell you what the problem is, because, and, and that goes back to my, and I've heard all of your arguments, and I understand why you want to go in through the reasonable door, but uh, this um, uh, use of the land is not going to last forever, and the town wants to sell off the land and somebody's going to go to the Registry of Deeds and not going to see that there's a formal recording of an easement. And uh, let's assume that this takes place, you know, so you've got no adverse possession claims or anything like that. And the new owner says, I don't want your trucks coming along here. I'm actually a little conservation group. And you may think it's just old blush old stuff over there, but blush old stuff over there is very important to the environment. And we're not going to let you keep cutting. Developer is going to be in a very bad position. You've got to get a formal document that says that somebody can enter into that land. The same, I think, is true for the roadway. Uh, I, so you have to have a formal document that will be filed in the registry of deeds. Okay, so, so you would have to have the formal document assuming that the town did not um, maintain the land itself or that it did not just act as a perhaps yeah. what you might call I mean, a good I mean, neighbor and allow it. the I, developer I, to do it himself. If we, said the, if we said the appeals committee has authority to do this, I'm sure the town would execute uh, whatever. Yes, but you can't, but I you mean, have I, to. I, my, my point is not that the town is going to violate a court order. My town right. is, you said, well, it may not be an easement. It may just be them cutting the bush. And I'm saying to you, no, this, this is an interest in land and in order to keep, you, you have to have it recorded so a future purchaser, um, the, the developer may sell the property. Right, this, this is an interest in public safety first. So I'd just like to say that, the, that the, the fundamental, as you go forward with your analysis, it starts from the proposition that there is a safety issue that needs to be addressed, that needs to be mitigated. The same way that you might install a traffic light and that over time that traffic light needs to be maintained, et cetera. Well, well, this so is, is, is the responsibility the responsibility of the state to make sure that uh, that, that this state highway doesn't have any, uh, you know, vegetative obstructions to the curve? I, I believe that it's the town that has an obligation, perhaps the state. Who, okay, so can the state enforce an obligation to, to keep the, the curve clear, the fear, to keep no. the view clear? Um, I'm not prepared to answer that if the court wanted to direct me to, to research that, but that was not, I don't have a, an answer prepared for that question. Uh, and if I may, since my time is running short, no state oversight. All of your other cases where you've pushed back the committee's authority, there has always been some state oversight of what the town is doing. Here you don't have that, regardless of which easement that you're looking at. If you're looking at that easement in the back, the, fi the local fire department can designate that as a fire lane. That's not, designation of a fire lane is, doesn't have state oversight. I, I know that as a fact. Um, This, is, this um, particular access wasn't even deemed necessary to make the project a go. The, the committee said, but it's a good idea. The developer has uh, suggested it. We like the idea. We encourage the town to do it. Okay? So that, that, and if they don't come back, and we can talk. But, that, but it's not an actual, um, <coughs> but the, it, it is all. 
No, they agreed that the single access road into the development may be sufficient because there was not the types of uh, slopes that sometimes are found with single access road. But having a, a secondary means of access for use by emergency vehicles only, and there's an existing. Well, then, then let's not have the into? easement. Uh, let's not have the easement. Let's have the town cooperate and allow emergency vehicles to go over that. The same, and, it, and the state has given local fire departments, which, by the way, um, there's a list on. I think it's page 394 of the different towns. Uh, the town sells, sells the, the land for some other entire use. Uh, parking lot, and the, the road wouldn't exist except for the easement. But in any case, what you're suggesting, Ms. Lennells, is that unlike maybe the first one, um, the, ac the, the secondary access load is not necessary to the project. So to go back to Justice Glaney's question, if we determined that the board did not have the authority to do this, the committee didn't have the authority to do this, that would not kill the project. Am that, I that second one, right. But do, the do you agree with Mr. Bablowski that if we conclude that the Housing Appeals Committee does not have the authority to, in essence, order the town to cut the, you know, so if there's sight lines, that that puts an end to the project? Uh, yes, because there is a regulation that says in the case of denial that the board shall have the burden of proving that there is a valid um, safety um, concern that outweighs the regional need for housing. And the board did find that, um, that this particular, that the motoring public on Lowell Road um, did were, need a certain amount of stopping sight distance and that um, it decided that there was a practical solution, real world, feasible solution, wasn't going to cost the town any money, was no fancy anything involved, no change of the use. Um, and so therefore, this valid concern did not outweigh the need for the housing. But if there is no solution to this um, stop citing distance issue, then yes, um, the board would have met its burden. Thank you, Ms. Lennox. Thank you. Yeah. Excuse me. Is there one more argument? <laughs> We're rising for your argument. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> According to my sheet, you just used up 15 minutes, and that's all that's allocated. Uh, Your Honor, uh, previously we had arranged for the division of How much time, time do you have? Five minutes. I would like to... Um, revisit a couple of the factual matters that have been brought before the court to straighten a few things out. Uh, going backwards in time, the first is that Lowell Road is a state numbered road. It is owned by the town of Groton. It is not a state highway. Uh, also, uh, the light department talked about there being no evidence whatsoever about safety matters. And I would just like to point out a very few brief things. One is that the uh, the, the Housing Appeals Committee had the benefit of a plan that showed the substation, showed the houses, showed the, the sound wall, which is designed to accomplish three different Mr. things. Mr. Wiseman, let me interrupt you. And without rehashing all of the mm -hmm. arguments. I have new arguments. No. Uh, the town may wish to alienate this land at some point. Mm -hmm. It may want to sell it to some third party. Whatever rights the Housing Appeals Committee purported to give to the developer with respect to whether they were absolutely necessary, the, the cutting for sight lines, or the road because it would be preferable to have a second uh, access and egress, they, those will not uh, attach to the land unless there's some recording. You have to, in other words, the, you, whatever the town's obligation is, and the town may well not be meeting its obligation, the town may be putting the people of Groton at great danger by the fact that it doesn't um, cut, cut the, the sight lines. The town may be liable because somebody gets injured, not because of this project, but because the sight lines are not uh, sufficiently well uh, cleared. But if the town wants to get rid of this property, mm -hmm. uh, we have to have something that's recorded, that, that places an interest uh, on the property. What is the authority of the housing 
uh, Appeals Committee to do that. And don't look at Maynard because I'm going to accept Mr. Bubowski's representation, which I hope is correct, that he went and looked at what the, what the claims were and they were not interests in land. This is an interest in land. I was going to go to Maynard, but for the very reasons that Mr. Bobrowski did, and to presume that his analysis is correct as, all, as well, and that the reason that this court in that case said that it could dispense with the meeting requirement of a town meeting is because a town meeting vote was not required because nothing arose to the level that a town meeting vote was needed. And I believe the same is true in this case as well. So we, if we look to see whether a town meeting vote is required, from your point of view, that ends the subject. If it's not required, that's the end of the... I believe you can go down either road. You can go down a road that does require a town meeting approval, and you can go down one that does not require a town meeting approval. If we accept Mr. Bobrowski's uh, analysis of Maynard, and for, for argument here, I'll presume that sure. it is correct, uh, this is also true in this case, because under the, under the conveyancing statutes, your case law behind it states that the municipal conveyance statutes apply if you're going from one specific municipal purpose to another. And you have case law that says that if you're going from one use to another inconsistent use, and we will maintain that the two easements that have been ordered by the HAC are 100% compatible with and consistent with the light department's use of this property for municipal light purposes. As a matter of fact, as, as Marianne Martin has, has pointed out, there are no trees in the sight line area. The light department has already cleared, leveled, and mows this area, and I believe they do so for two purposes. One that has been discussed on the record is for sight line to their own driveway, because they are also on the, same, on the inside of that same curve. The other is that there is a utility pole in the middle of this, and you can see the utility pole on the plans that are part of the record. This utility pole is used purely for electrical department purposes to transfer the power from the substation into the grid that goes along the streetway. So it's the, it's the point where power goes from high tension through the substation and is put out to where households can use it. You can't have, you can't have any vegetation around those power lines. They need to be kept clear for safety purposes, for, for all sorts of purposes. So this area is already pretty much in the same condition that it needs to be to meet the Housing Appeals Committee's requirements. Now when they refer to slight regrading, there is significant regrading that needs to be done on our property in this area. We have a mound, we have shrubbery, we have all sorts of stuff that needs to come out on our property. It will need to be blended in with the light department's area. Uh, the regrading is incredibly light in this area. It may be none at all. Is there any other uh, way your project could be designed where the, where the driveway or whatever it is that's causing this problem didn't create the sight line issue? Um, unlikely. Um, as Mr. Bobrowski points out, the, the record shows the HAC found that we needed another 49 feet of, of um, sight line. And if we move the road to its extreme opposite end, we've only got about 35 or 40 feet to work with. Now, I do need to point out that there are other ways to get speed down. In fact, the way that the, um, the, speed, the, the standards were used, they go in increments of five miles an hour. So when you look at uh, what is the average speed of the 85th percentile car going along this roadway, you go to the nearest five miles per hour. If cars were going a couple miles an hour slower in this area, it would have dropped the standard from 45 miles an hour to 40 miles per hour and then we would have met the sight line distance. There may be ways to get traffic to go a little bit slower. We would ask you to keep that in mind. So, so, so you could petition the state highway department? I can petition the town. To, to, it's on a state highway though, isn't it? It's a state numbered road that is owned by the town. So the town can regulate the speed? Bumps. Correct. Decides whether they can put speed bumps on it? Correct. For example, they already have in this exact sight line easement area, they have a go slow children sign. So, so why isn't that a regulation within the meaning of chapter 40B um, that could be affected by the comprehensive permit? You, the town of, of Groton, must lower the speed limit in this area to, to 40 miles per hour. I don't believe anyone has looked at that yet, Your Honor. However, well, we've... We 
an easement. We're here on an easement. We can't go looking at all kinds of right. other things. We would ask you to uphold the easements, and I believe that the HAC has the authority to grant the easements with or without town meeting approval. And I'm saying that there's a road this way and there's a road that way. Um, Under one theory, under one road to approval, town meeting approval is not necessary because since the, these easements do not change the use of the land and not inconsistent. The land for the of the no. If I could give you two examples why I disagree with you, Your Honor. One would be that both of these easements lie within the, the town of Groton zoning setback areas. So this 10-foot wide easement that's in the front is within its 50-foot wide front setback area. You can't put any buildings or structures in this area anyway. And they already have a bunch of white pines there that provide the screening from the street. Have you briefed why the town meeting doesn't have to do this? Yes. As a matter of law? As a matter of law? Yes. And apart from these theories we're hearing now? Um, we have briefed that the municipal, under the municipal conveyancing statutes, the nature of these easements is such that they are not inconsistent with the town's existing uh, use of this property and therefore the town meeting vote is and not required. And the facts are all, all, all in place to show that they're not inconsistent? Yes. I believe that is correct, Your Honor. Yes. Okay. Is the, is, can an easement be granted uh, as long as the town is using the property for the prop, for the easement for, you know, and knows that the, that the guild has it? Are you talking about the, the emergency access season, perhaps, which is further back Either on the property? One. Either one. I mean, Justice Corey's concern is about, you know, the future use or resale or whatever. Can the easement be limited to its current, its current use? It could. It, the easement can be li uh, limited to uh, providing sight line, and which is a use that is necessary along this property anyway. Anywhere you put a driveway along the light I mean, department's for property. Example, providing a sight line for as long as the uh, electric light department has a substation on the property or something like that. Could you do that? Um, you could do that, but I don't think that would be necessary or, 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 or assisting either the housing or the town. Once the housing is in, you want to be sure that they have adequate sight distance. Um, I would note that in the statute itself, under the definition of local boards, and this is going back um, to the power of the, uh, of the HAC, there is in the definition, it says not only planning boards and boards of health and building inspectors, but it also says city councils and boards of selectmen. Those last two, I think, are instructive. You're talking about the chief executive officers of a town and the, and the legislative body of a city. They don't mention- They don't have the authority to convey this land. In this case, the selectmen have the authority to convey the easements because the easements are not inconsistent they, with the use. They, have they agreed to do so? No. 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 And that's that's why you say you come up with an aid. Council, your time is way over. I, and I appreciate I it. Thank you very much. Thank you.